Hey everyone, I'm Scott Stokely, and a really common question players have been asking for years is, how do I stop rolling my wrist on my sidearm? Now I'm gonna tell you how to fix it. It's actually pretty simple and 100% will work for everybody. Uh, but first, you can get this information and a lot more at one of my full day seminars. I'm announcing more full day seminars all across the country at scottstokely.net. Uh, these all cap at six players, by the way. So if you want to go, you got to get your ticket now. They will all sell out. They always do. Or you can take my online Become a Complete Disc Golfer class, also available at scottstokely.net. All right. How do you keep from rolling your wrist on the side? Well, first, let me define what players mean, because you may be doing it, but haven't heard that terminology. So when a player says rolling their wrist, they're referring to a shot where if they throw their sidearm right-handed, it's not that they miss the fairway a little to the left. It's not that they turn the disc over a little bit too much. When they say rolling their wrist, it's when you get this erratic throw that goes way left and way turned over. Basically, you're aiming here, but instead the disc goes over there, often turning into a cut roller. The fix to rolling your wrist is actually very simple because there are two things that cause you to roll your wrist. Knowing what those two causes are means the solution is simply don't do either of those two things wrong. So here's all you do. Number one, you need to be facing forward at the point of release. Okay, sidearm's not a sideways facing throw. It is a forward facing throw. Even if you see a pro crow hop or X step sideways up the pad, they will be facing forward at the point of release. So what I mean by that is if I'm throwing the disc this direction and at the point of release, I'm facing forward, the disc will not go radically to the left. I mean, when you throw a baseball, you never miss 10 degrees left of where you're aiming. Where you can pull the disc 10 degrees left is by being sideways. If on this throw, at the point of release, I am sideways, not forward, well, then it becomes very easy to throw the disc radically off in that direction. So it's easy, or rather simple. Face forward at the point of release. And if you're not sure if you're facing forward, look at your footwork. Your foot does not have to be facing exactly forward. Don't get hung up on, on where your foot lines up. That's never a good thing. But if your foot's facing this direction, 90 degrees from where you're throwing, then the rest of your body can't be forward. Make sure the foot's forward, hips too, but get that foot basically forward. That's part one. Second thing that's causing it is going to be your grip. Now, this is why. If you recall from my Don't Serve the Pizza video, and I'll put a link in the description, when you throw, you don't throw with your palm up. Okay, you have no range of motion like this. You have no strength with your palm up. The whole palm up, serve the pizza thing is probably the worst throwing advice on the internet. Don't do it. This hinge moves this direction. When it moves this direction, obviously your palm's not going to be up. Now, the key on grip then is to not put your fingerprints primarily on the bottom or the flight plate of the disc. So think about it. If your hand's moving this direction, the way you're supposed to, not serving the pizza, then your fingerprints are pointing this direction. They're not pointing up. If your hand moves this direction, your fingers are going to press on the rim of the disc or on the finger pressing on the rim of the disc. If your fingers are touching primarily the bottom of the disc, it means that your palm is up and you're serving the pizza. Well, now how does this apply to rolling your wrist? Well, if you ultimately throw correctly and don't serve the pizza, but your fingers aren't pressing the bottom of the disc, but or if they're not pressing the rim, but rather are, are rotated and pressing the bottom of the disc, think about it. If I turn my fingerprints pointed up at all, but then I don't serve the pizza, 
I've now rotated the disc into this position when my hand is moving the correct direction. Well, when players talk about rolling their wrist, they're talking about taking the disc and radically turning it over. Well, if my fingers are, let's say, not correctly pressing the rim, but not totally awfully serving the pizza, but let's say they're at 45 degrees, well, if I put them at 45 degrees, meaning the fingerprints are pointing this direction, then when I go to throw, if I correctly don't serve the pizza, I've now rotated the disc over. So all you do on your grip is to make sure that your fingerprints are pointing in the direction that you're throwing. And then when you set the disc on top of it, and again, I don't care which grip you use, okay? There's different hand shapes, different grips. Don't get fixated on one grip. But whatever grip you use, if the fingerprints are pointing that direction and you set the disc on top of your hand, your fingerprints press the rim of the disc or they press the finger pressing the rim of the disc. 100% guarantee if you do those two things, you can't roll your wrist. All right, one more reminder. I am now doing my full day seminars all across the country again. Not just me, they're Stokely Method seminars. I also have some coaches doing them as well. I'm doing most of them, but I have coaches also teaching. You can see who's teaching which class at scottstokely.net to read more and sign up. Can't stress this enough. Everyone sells out. So if you wanna get into a Stokely Method seminar, get your tickets now. And if you can't make a seminar, or if you prefer a different experience, my six month online class, Become a Disc, sorry, Become a Complete Disc Golfer, is available at scottstokely.net. Final thing, the online class is not just a bunch of videos and drills to work on. You will get an unlimited number of professional form reviews, meaning you get the same thing you'll get at the seminar, the process, then you will upload a video of yourself. Our coaches will correct what you're doing. You'll work on it. You'll upload another video. Basically, you get the same one-on-one -on -one experience in addition to the you know, full classes, but you'll get the same one-on-one -on -one experience as you get at the seminar. There's just a time lag because it's online. So the six-month class is just a more complete version spread out. All right, thanks, everyone.